Welcome back everybody. Um, I'm OK Fixer and uh, we're going to do a little work on the beetle again. Um, this is going to be my last video that I do on uh, the car per se uh, until I get my engine put together. Uh, the engine that's in this car now uh, makes noise that I don't find desirable. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, uh, I've got another uh, lower end and we're going to build up another engine. Uh, but you probably won't know because these videos will be seamless. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hope to have enough videos leading up into that, so we'll see. Uh, but uh, this will be our last uh, video. I might do uh, some other work on it, uh, it but not video worthy. So uh, little things like adjust the headlights and headlight rings and stuff. But uh, for right now, we're going to do a parking brake cable. As you know, while I was putting carpet in, uh, the parking brake uh, cable was frayed. Uh, so I got this one from my secret weapon, Rock Auto. Uh, it was nine dollars, and uh, it was about fifteen dollars shipped. So Mexican made. Um, we'll see how she holds up. We'll see how it works. Uh, it's not German, uh, but I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't work just fine. While we're in there, also, we're going to have a look at that other side. And it's not leaking, but I did the other side the way I did the uh, driver's side, that is the seals. And I want to look at that O-ring uh, because I used, what I did is I, I used the original uh, ring uh, up against that seal. And the ring was all beat up and it tore that seal up, I think. So I need to look at that and see what's going on. Uh, just to get in there and make sure that that's correct. Um, I did not torque those bolts down to where they should be on the uh, passenger side as well, uh, nor the uh, the big nut on the rim or on the wheel. So all that needs to be done, and I might as well do it while I'm in there putting the parking brake cable in. So the first thing we're going to have to do is jack the car up, take the wheel off and the drum, and we'll have a look in it. I have a jack stand under the front and the rear. I have it just on the uh, outboard of the um, grease fitting. And now I have three points of support. And the car is very strong and you're not worried about the jack. <coughs> And you have it in the front also, so you're not depending on any twisting of the pan and stuff. This set of Craftsman sockets uh, my mother bought for me uh, when I was 15 years old. Have a guess on how much they cost when I was 15. These are Craftsman impact sockets. Take a guess. I'll tell you in a minute. This one has not begun leaking yet, but that doesn't mean that it won't. The answer to that question, $50. Think about that. Think about what you can buy now for 50 bucks, and how much that costs then. Pretty pricey.
pretty pricey in You know what? You never have the right tools, do you? Yeah. Supposed to come off of there. Okay. Let me work on that for a little bit. You think it's just going to come right off? Nope. Yeah, I don't think this is long for this world. That one was. See how mashed up it is? Yeah, it would have started leaking here pretty soon. For some reason I used the same old deformed, look at, look at how deformed that is and I used that. I don't know what was going through my mind. Ah, <sighs> what do you know? So this is probably giving me the same kind of grief as the other one. So let's get our kit. Gone? Yep, it's walked off. Let me go find it. Uh, this gasket kit had uh, two gaskets in it again. 
They don't fit the back side, I can tell you that. I've already tried. I don't know why it has two gaskets. One thinner than the next. Yeah, they're both the same size. Don't know. Okay, I've got all my old gasket material off there. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little oil on this gasket. <coughs> Just to help it to seal. Kind of. Maybe that's the wrong thing to do, but I don't think so. That's going to go right there. Okay. And a big O ring. over the bearing surface like all y'all like so okay and then our yeah okay then we have our small washer in our packet which is this one and that's going to be a surface that the seal rides against I don't know why I did that. Uh, we're going to put a little 90 weight on that so we don't booger up the... The, uh, the seal is kind of a square and we're going to work that on there. Try not to booger it up too bad or break it. Make sure it's not twisted. Let's slide that up on there. Just like that. good. And then uh, here's our seal or our uh, spacer and our spacer is uh, it's really cheesed up. You know it's probably I probably ought to buy some new spacers for this because they're ni nice and smooth like they were but it's just a seal you know it, once the spacer it's not cheesed up too bad uh, but once the spacer uh, is up against this what moves is uh, the the friction part is behind it. This doesn't move on there. At least I don't think it does. Okay, let's see what we got here. Hmm. Let's the rest of our gasket off. But I'm probably, when I uh, drive this a couple of times, I'm going to find it to be leaking. Probably. And that's probably what's wrong with it, is those spacers. I think they'll be okay, though. Truly. I think what it was is the, is the side that it was thrust up against was really out of... is like... really way out of... It was bent really bad, so have a look at what you got here. That seal looks to be okay. Okay. And is this plugged all up? No, our hole's good.
cheap sockets. Incidentally, if you don't know the difference between a cheap socket and a good socket, it's the uh, depth that the uh, that the bolt rides in. If the bolt goes in there so far, see, you want the bolt going. You don't want the bolt going in there that far. The head. You want it going in there that much. That way, you can push on it and push it into the push it into the into the threads. But cheap sockets, you have to start by hand, and then, yeah, yeah. Okay, when we go to button this all up, we'll torque those to 43 foot-pounds. Now, let's take this backing or this uh, brake, all these brakes off of here because uh, I think I've got a. I might be able to get it. Maybe. Yeah. What do you got here? Yeah, I didn't think that'd just pull out of there. We'll have to study our cable because the whole thing, that clip's probably going to have to come off and then the whole thing's going to have to come out that way. I was hoping I would just be able to slip a new brake cable down in there. No, it's not going to happen that way. Let's study the other brake cable and see what it looks like. On this particular one, uh, this is where it goes into uh, the brake. And there's a back backing plate, and uh, I see the washer here. Uh, but I see nowhere that clip would go on there. So let's, uh, it looks like there's a little clip there, so I'm going to fidget around with that and see if I can't <coughs> pull that off of there, but all the rest is looks pretty straightforward looks about the same except for the big kink in it right there I don't like that so we could probably straighten that out a little bit there we go there we go and we'll grease it before we put it in too probably a good idea set that down somewhere here we go as I studied that more, that is not a clip, it's just a stop. And the, the whole thing just kind of drives in there. Kind of like. I know. Oh my god, what are you doing to that screwdriver? Well, the tip's already goofed up on it, that's why I'm using it for a punch. So that comes out. bend those out of the way. Just give those a little, a little tweak. Like that. And there she is. Yeah, I gotta kind of pull those back a little bit. Look at that. You know what? 
I don't know if that cable will come right out of there or not. Probably not, because it's frayed. Probably not, because it's frayed. Probably not. But she might come out of there if I cut her off. end off. She might come right out of there. Let's shove that back up through there. And let's go into the car and cut that piece off. See if I can't pull it out of there. If I can get away with just putting this cable in there, why wouldn't I? I wonder if that'll go through there. Let's see what happens here. Why wouldn't I? Uh, no, it's not gonna... Oh, it's got pinched off there, it's not gonna go through there. Nope. Gotta pull the whole thing out of there. Okay. Well, let's do that. I'll have to get up underneath the car here and uh, get onto it with a pair of pliers, probably. Big pair of pliers and give it a little tweak. See what happens here. I didn't even have to grab a hold of it with pliers. The end of the Bowden tube just came right out of there. Real easy. Pretty simple. There's why I'm replacing that. Afraid. Okay, I stuck that end of the Bowden cable up into the body. And now I'm pulling the cable through this way. And uh, if I can't get this in there. Excuse my fat head. You want to think they made it the same size, yeah? Let's look at the fossil evidence here. <laughs> size. If we put a little grease on it, what would happen? get a pair of pliers on there, a smaller pair of pliers, and see if I can't work that in there a little bit. Should go right in there. Okay, with the aid of a pair of ice grips clipped on the back here, excuse my face, let me get it away. I was able to get it in there. Uh, make sure your cable's not rubbing on anything, as well it shouldn't, and uh, that it can move. I'm going to try to work the kink out of this. It's not too bad. Okay, pull her all the way back. And uh, pull grease on it. It doesn't need to be slathered with grease. Just, uh, just a nice little coating on it should work.
don't grease it up here because that will put grease in your brake cavity and you don't want that. Your little clip here goes up over, and the little washer goes up over the spring like that. And then this hooks on that little paw like that. There you go. There you are. Now, let's get up in the cabin and put our, our brake on, our parking brake on, and uh, adjust that a little bit. Or at least put it on, and then we can put the hub on. Have torqued these two, of course. So let's go up in the cabin. Ah, uh, look, I have gloves on. Clean hands. All right. Had to take my seat belts off, and then uh, this portion of carpet has to come up. I know, I know, I know. If you use uh, fresh gloves, yeah. Now I have to fish out that cable. Let's see how that's going to work on there. Figure out exactly what we got. Well, we got two slots here in it. And so I guess this is going to go over the uh, kind of a thing. So we should be able to put the parking brake on and the heat control cables and slip this on. And then our carpet, since we have the hole cut in it, she should go, should go on there and probably we can work the carpet around this. Get it in there. Alright, I uh, sucked all the nuts out of there and I gave it a bit of a, a, a schemey 90 weight treatment in there because there was some oil, uh, rust at the bottom of this a little bit. A little surface rust. So I, I put some 90 weight down there. Um, here is our parking brake. Uh, I took it apart and I gave it a what for um, with a little paint and uh, chased it with some flat so it wouldn't be shiny anyways it would kind of be flat and uh, I d did a little greasing of it uh, I took the, uh, the little grease to where the uh, they pro probably shouldn't have any grease on it at all but I I'm a big grease guy so you know I put a little grease on the paw and stuff but all that's gonna attract dirt so your choice whatever you want to do uh, this sets in here like so One goes on one side and one goes on the other. And then this fits through like so. And there's a little circlip on the other side that I have to put on. Uh, but this, this here piece unscrews and then there's a little washer, a spring, and a little hook. It, it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple uh, how it works. Uh, and this has to hook, this portion right here, has to hook up under here, which I don't have it hooked in, so I'll have to pull this back out and I'll have to hook that up underneath there, but I can't do it, uh, it'll take me just a minute because i got to fix it. Okay, i got my clip on the other side and I've got that piece down into the frame, so it, okay, take it all the way down and then just barely thread your nuts on on this piece and then wrestle it over the top of that like that now you can tighten it up and they should have or at least mine had uh, four nuts they had uh, two uh, regular nuts and then it had two cap nuts like this and uh, I think the cap nuts help it for, from uh, poking through the rubber, kind of. The adjustment is made on these. Um, uh, just for shock and awe, I put the, uh, the drum on, uh, on the other brake. So don't think I'm whacking my brakes out because I'm not. I put that drum back on. But if you screw those on, and 
they act as a bumper. Okay, next we have to do is we have to put on our, because we can slide this right over the top, we have to put our heater control levers on next. So let's get those. Okay, I don't know if I have all the parts correct on this. Uh, by the way, I did give them a little sanding and a little what for with that Duplicolor uh, chrome paint. And uh, it kind of makes it nice and metally looking. And so what you need to do is fish your fish your cable out of here and uh, attach your and then that's got to go back down in there Uh, before you go on there, it should have. Let's see here. It should have one fiber washer. And then that should go right on there. Like that. And then there should be another fiber washer, and this one's attached, kind of, it's stuck itself to the. And then that little keeps it from going all the way back if you put it in the right slot right there. And then I had a washer and I had a nut. Now, I don't know, in mine, uh, I have locking nuts for mine. So, I, I, none of this stuff was on the car, so you know I'm I'm thinking that's right, and then you can you can watch and make sure your flappers still flap. And this one, the black one, controls the uh, airflow in the car, and the red one turns the heat boxes on. So let's uh, put the other one on, tighten those up, and make sure they work properly, and then we'll put our boot on. Now once you've got both your levers on and adjusted, I have this one a little looser than this one's a little tighter, simply because I, I want it to be snug so it holds that box open. Okay, and then um, it's kind of got a little bend to it. Have to be the way it is. And this has got a slot in it too that allows you to oops, right here it allows you to maybe it doesn't yes it does it allows you to get to your bolts so you can adjust it that's what I think I thought it would have There you go. Now uh, we'll flip our carpet over and finesse that carpet around that rubber, put our seat belts on, and then we'll go back to our brake and uh, set all the parameters there as far as the torques.
Well, uh, we have a little hole here, and we have a little hole on the other side. So I didn't cut my carpet quite right, but what are you going to do? Just a driver, I'm, I'm okay with it. Parking brake works. Heat on. Heater control. Beautiful. I think that looks all right. Not too bad. Better than kicking the pants. And we can get to our to adjust our um, nuts there. So that's not too bad. You can see the little spot there right in the corners where it just quite, quite doesn't fit right. But I'm okay with it. Okay, let's go torque our nuts on our uh, hub assembly there and uh, put everything back together. Careful of your fenders. Hmm. Aha. We'll see how much more we can put on that. The holes right. It's about right. It's supposed to be 200 foot-pounds, so I don't know. We'll see how much more we can put on that. But we want to put the car on the ground first before we go do that. I kicked the other one a mile, so I'll have to get it.
little bit more. Sorry about that. Now, how do I know that I got that bolt tight enough? That's a lot of torque putting on there like that with that pipe. Now, am I going to get it any farther than that? Probably break it if I put it any farther. Okay, so that's the hole that it's going into. If I went any farther with it, it'd probably break. So, you know, it's it's not like you have a hundred holes here. You have six. So, <laughs> you have to choose one. And that's about as close as you're going to get. And that's how I tighten up a Volkswagen uh, nut. So, I use a big piece of pipe on there. And uh, we're getting real close to our 200 and something pounds. If not over. So... I think we're okay right there. Put these back in the uh, in the uh, stash. Probably ought to order another set of these, and I think I'll order a new set of collars if I can find them also. Well, there you go. Thanks for wrenching with me, and uh, hope you learned something. I did. Always do every time I turn a bolt on this car, turn a wrench on this car. So, like and subscribe, and. Uh, like I said, I appreciate you being here in my garage and uh, checking me out on YouTube. And uh, this is going to be the last video uh, as far as working on the car, body, suspension, whatever, interior, because I don't have any more money for the interior right now. And then uh, I have an engine I have to pick up and rework. And so we'll probably... Uh, be working on the engine next so that engine has to come out and uh, I've got a completely different lower end and we'll put those new cylinder heads on it that we got and put it all together and hopefully I'll have a good engine or a reasonable engine alright thanks a lot and I'll see you guys later